understanding as the academic profession makes its way down. Thank you very much.
let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful unto you for such a beautiful day like this. We thank you for the conception of Caleb University. We thank you for the execution of the program to Chapter 9. We are grateful unto you for how we started this convocation on Thursday, Friday, and today the grand finale of it. Father, we pray your presence and your power will abide with us in the name of Jesus Christ. We are looking up to you, Lord, that these, our young ones that we are celebrating today, they move from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that peace, tranquility, will be within the world of Caleb University in the name of Jesus Christ, that be peace in Nigeria. Thank you, Father, for the answer. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Thank you very much, sir. Please be seated to distinguish, ladies and gentlemen. I respectfully invite the visitor, Prince Dr. Oladega Adelowo Adebogon, PhD, DSC Honorary Cursor, to address the convocation. The Executive Government of Lagos State. His Excellency, Mr. Babajide Sanwoli, ably represented by the Special Advisor on Education, Mr. Wahab. Members of the Legal State Executive Council here present. Members of the State Executive Council here present. His Royal Majesty, of Ajibadi Adoro, the Ranodo of Umota, and other royal father here present. The chairman, third of trustee of Caleb University, His Excellency, Chief Adriodo Ogunleye. Members of the board of trustee here present, the pre-chancel of Caleb University, and also the chairman of council, Professor Elso Ajayi, the Executive Secretary, National University Commission, Professor Abuba Kalashi, members of the University Government Council here present, the Vice Chancellor of Caleb University, Professor Nosa Owen, Vice Chancellors of Sisters University, the Principal Officers of Caleb University, Principal Officers and Eminent Academics and Friends from Sisters University, members of Senate, and staff of Caleb University. The honorary awardee of the day, our special guest, distinguished parents and guidance, our team guidance of today, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all to today's historic event. Exactly 15 years ago today, Full academic activities commenced at Caleb University with less than 200 students. But today, to the glory of God, the university has grown in leaps and bounds. It is only fitting, therefore, as we reflect on the past, to magnify and glorify God, whom through whom we are well able. Through faith in God, Caleb University has successfully molded destiny over the years as we solidly believe in education without corruption. Today's event, the 12th Confessional Ceremony, is to further prove to the above assertion we give all the praise to God in His highest. A lot of resources, human, material, infrastructure, and financial has been expended by the university and also by the parents and guidance to produce today's graduates. 
whom, by the grace of God, will make a positive impact in this country in the name of Jesus. To all undergraduate and postgraduate graduates, I admonish you to remember all you have learned, which has made you worthy in character and learning. We admonish you to uphold them in all your official undertaking. Make your parents extremely proud and be worthy ambassador of Caleb University. Aspire in all you do to exemplify the qualities of godliness, innovation, service, teamwork, excellence, creativity, and integrity, values that Caleb University is very passionate about. We employ you to be the different the world is waiting for, and let our world be a better place because of you. I want to especially appreciate all the key stakeholders who have contributed in one way or the other towards the progress of Caleb University. Time will fail me to individually appreciate each stakeholder, but survive is to say that the university is deeply appreciative of the individual and collective contribution of all our stakeholders. Nevertheless, I wish to appreciate the federal government through National University Commission and Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, Lagos State Government under the able dynamic of our Governor, Babajide Sanwolo, our distinguished and supportive parents, the dedicated staff of Caleb University, our financial partner, the local community, especially in Mota community, under the supportive ownership of His Royal Majesty, Obajibadi Agoro, the Mota Local Council Development Area, the Lagos State Police Command, Lagos State Minister of Education, and our ever supportive ladies and gentlemen of the press. My prayer for you all is that you will never lose your reward in Jesus' name. As I round up, I want to conclude by admonishing our graduating students to take note of the following five things as they prepare for the future. Number one, you, as you are going out, you must have passion for anything you want to embark upon in life. Nothing is as important as passion. No matter what you want to do in life, make sure you are passionate, be passionate. Two, you must have vision. Vision is a picture of the future that produces passion. Vision without action is merely a dream. And action without vision just passes the time. Vision with action can change the world. The Bible says, where there is no vision, people perish. You must, as you have vision, you must also have strategy. Once you have vision, you want to know how to go about it. Strategy is about making choices and determining steps you are going to take to actualize your vision. It is about deliberately choosing to be different, maybe by adopting blue ocean strategy that is catching a niche for yourself. You must have an action, action plan. You must create an action plan that will help you achieve your goal by following th these five steps. As you set your action plan, make sure your action plan, you set smart goal. Set smart goal. Create a list of action. Send a timeline. Designate resources. Monitor your progress. Above all, above all, vision, passion, strategy, and action. The next thing is, in whatever you are going to do, you must acknowledge God. Acknowledge God in all your future endeavor. Give preference to God. Mark you, if you bow for God, men will bow for you. If you respect God, you'll be respected by all and sundry. Take it serious. Make sure you respect God in all you do. To our dear parents, I want to congratulate you all. I pray that the Almighty God will grant you long life to enjoy the fruit of your labor. I want a bigger amen. amen. I have a strong belief that our graduates of today are going to become pillars in this nation. Amen. 
And by the time they will be celebrated, nobody will stand in for you. By the time this student will be getting married, nobody will stand in for you. You will be there, alive, hale and healthy in the name of Jesus. I thank you all for your presence today. And thank you most sincerely for your time and attention. God bless you. Excellencies, the proprietor of the university, your royal majesties and highnesses, the chairman and members of the board of trustees, the chancellor, the pro-chancellor and chairman of governing council, members of the governing council and of the senate, my lord spiritual and temporal, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Section 4, subsection 1E of Caleb University Law 2007 provides that for the purpose of carrying out the objects of the institution, Caleb University shall have powers to hold examinations and award degrees, diplomas, certificates, and other distinctions to persons who have pursued courses of study approved by the university and have satisfied such other requirements as the university may lay down. Section 4, subsection 1F also says that the university shall have powers to grant honorary degrees, fellowships, or other academic titles. Section 4, subsection 1C also states that the university shall have powers to institute and award fellowships, scholarships, bursaries, medals, prizes, and other titles, distinctions, awards, and other forms of assistance. For which purpose a convocation for the confirmment of degrees and other academic titles and distinctions of the university shall be held normally once every year at such time and place as shall be determined by the Senate. The degrees, academic titles and distinctions shall be conferred by the person presiding. Caleb University Laws, Section 4, Subsection 81 stipulates that the chancellor shall, in relation to the university, take precedence over all other members of the university. And when he is present, shall preside at all meetings of convocation held for the purpose of conferring degrees. Also, the pro-chancellor shall, in relation to the university, take precedence over all members of the university except the chancellor or vice-chancellor when acting as chairman of convocation. I hereby call upon the Chancellor to constitute this assembly as a congregation for the purpose of conferring honorary degrees, postgraduate degrees and diplomas, first degrees, and presentation of prizes. By the authority vested in me by Section 4, Subsection 81 of the Caleb University Law 2007. I hereby constitute the as this assembly as a convocation of Caleb University in Mortal Lagos for the purpose of conferring honorary doctorate degrees, postgraduate degrees and diplomas, first degrees, and the presentation of prizes. I respectfully invite the Vice Chancellor to address the convocation. I have a God who never fails. I have a God who never fails.
never fails and that Jesus never fails, I want you to be the one to shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. The proprietor and visitor of Caleb University, Dr. Oladega Adelowo Adebogun. The executive governor of Lagos State, ably represented. The chancellor of Caleb University. The Pro-Chancellor of Caleb University, the Board of Trustees Chairman and members of the Board of Trustees and Council, our very, very distinguished honorary awardees, degree awardees, our distinguished convocation lecturer is already dressed like a professor, and uh, I told him he's now a professor. I mean, all the wonderful dignitaries we have here, the Senate, the management, staff students, our very special parents, I want to welcome you to this uh, glorious day, the grand finale of the 2021-2022 session convocation. Some months ago, the those who are graduating now were given an opportunity to pick a theme for themselves. Now, what will be the theme of this convocation? And they said trailblazers. It's wonderful to be a trailblazer, but every trailblazer, every trail starts from the point. But thank God that today you are here as evidence of that trail. And my prayer is that where God is taking you, you will get there in Jesus' name. Amen. God has been good to us. He has been faithful. Nothing, there is no word. You know, if we had a thousand tongues individually, it's not enough to praise the Lord. If we look at, it's already 15 years, but within 15 years, Starting from that day, January 21st, 2008, when the first set of students came into this university. I mean, it's just been wonderful. And I tell people, Caleb University is a mystery. Don't try to understand it. It's just the grace and the mercy of God. Today, we are graduating 966 uh, students at both undergraduate and postgraduate levels. <laughs> of that number, 32 made a first class. <laughs> One thing I can tell you is that when you make a first class in Caleb University, you are made a first class. And at the postgraduate level, we have 32 distinctions. So it's 32, 32. And in this set, we are having more second class upper degree holders than second class lower. There are 390 second class upper degree holders and 313 second class lower degree holders. So you are very special. And of all of this, the overall best graduating students, Eunice, Muyoluwa Osho had a CGPA of 4.86. And at the postgraduate level, Timothy Oyelowo, with a CGPA of 4.90, is the overall best graduate student. Is Timothy here? Timothy, where are you? Oh, that's Timothy Oyelowo. What of Muyoluwa Osho? Moi, okay. So we, 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 we want to thank God. And what are those things that have distinguished us? If you look at the speech, you will see a, a lengthy speech. But I'm not going with the speech because the speech will take us a long time to finish. 
A lot is happening simultaneously in Caleb University. For those who are graduating today, I mean, some of them were in this school about a month ago, and I'm sure that they are amazed at the transformation that has taken place in this hall. That means you are very special. For the hall to be reconfigured like this because of you means that you are very special. And you will remain special in Jesus' name. What are those things that distinguish uh, this particular convocation? This is the first time that we are having convocation for three days in a row. <laughs> On Thursday, the 19th of January, we had the COPAS and COLES students. Yesterday, we had the CASMA students. Those are the acronyms we use. CASMAS is College of Arts, Social and Management Sciences. Uh, COLED is College of Education. Uh, COPAS is College of Peer and Applied Sciences. And today, we have COLESMA and the postgraduate uh, students. This is also the first time we are having, following a decision of the Governing Council on June 17 this year, the convocation happening on the Founders' Day. So, if we begin to sing praises to God, we will not finish. And we also want to thank God because today, it's exactly five years. I mean, the last time we gave honorary degrees was five years ago in 2018. And today we are honoring some very special people. Two years ago, I mean, three years ago in 2020, um, our new chancellor, Chief Edwin Clark, was given an honorary award as part of his investiture. But in terms of giving distinguished members of the society five years, that means our honorary award is very special. You are very special, sirs. God bless you. What are those things that are changing or that have changed? Caleb University represents, I mean, a standard. I'll just give you an example. In December last year, the National Universities Commission, that's the regulatory agency for edu uh, university education in Nigeria, launched a new core curriculum minimum academic standard. It's a new curriculum. The first comprehensive review of curriculum since 2007. And under the leadership of Professor Peter Okebukola, who was our immediate past board of trustees chairman, is driving a lot in NUC. He gave every university in Nigeria the opportunity to submit core courses because now under the new CC mass, that's the acronym, universities have the opportunity to develop 30% original innovative courses. So he threw the challenge to all the universities and said, that they should submit sample, sample courses, you know, and they, they sent a template. I can tell you that as of two days ago, the result came out. 114 universities were able to meet the NUC target. Of that number, 14 had a 100% throughout, and Caleb University is one of them. <laughs> this is one university where all our courses, all our programs are fully accredited, all of them. <laughs> this is one university where we started something that represents a novelty in university education. We started the Global Information Technology Certification. Before now, what we used to have is that universities will do some IT training for their students. And you have training organizations. We said no. In this place, we want the certification that will be recognized in Switzerland, in Moldova, in Canada, 
That's the one we wanted. And we started. I can tell you that at every level of education, undergraduate education in Caleb University, we have IT education. You must have an IT education. So further drive that, we now have a working collaboration because we started CUA Technologies. We started a working collaboration with CompTIA. CompTIA is a globally recognized IT uh, entity. And so we have, under the CUL, started you know, uh, training all our ordinary level students. And you know what? God has been good to us. For the first time in the history of Caleb University, I just said I should digress and mention that. We had the highest admission last session. And for 100 level alone, we had 1,558 students. And with that statistic, because we did something we call jam policy meeting. We were there and uh, we were number three among private universities nationally. That is last year. You want me to give you a secret? You like secrets. It's not gossip, it's real. This year, we already have gone beyond that. We have not done our matriculation, but we have over 2,000 students already. So God has been good to us. So we've started the Global IT Certification, and uh, wherever you go, all over the world, we have our ambassadors. And this distinguished group of graduates, they are joining our exclusive ambassadorial list. I mean, you are getting your letters of credence today. So you present any country you go. If I when you get to the airport, you will tell them I'm a graduate of Caleb University. You see, immigration will begin to run her time scatter just to let you in. That's what God has done for us. Infrastructurally, a lot is happening. In fact, it's a construction site. On November 21, last year, our new students came in. And when they came in, those of them who are sitting now, sorry we could not do that uh, while you were here, but they needed to see something different. So, the new cafeteria was opened, and you need to be there. Please make sure you get to our new cafeteria before you go home. One of our parents, one of our parents called me. He said, Professor, do you know where I am? I said, where are you? He said, I'm in your new cafeteria. This place is beautiful. It's beautiful. And I'm sure the way you are nodding, you'll go there after now. And that parent that called me is somebody known. Is the evidence of the transformative power of God. His name is KG Hamilton. He was a pianist for Fela and Nicola Pokuti. They traveled all over the world. But today he's a pastor. And his child is here. He was the one that called me. <laughs> On that same November 21, our new students moved into what is now Mercy Hall. Mercy, you will receive mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. And for those who just came now, two new hostels. Mercy Hall has a capacity for 480 students. And the two new May hostels that we have over here, one is Levy Hall, Levi, depending on how you pronounce it. I'm not an English, uh, you know. And we have Integrity Hall. And each of them has a capacity for 1,020. <laughs> now, there is somebody who is sitting over there. His name is Josiah Adeyomoye. He is our university librarian. The only language he understands is library, standalone library. And he wanted that thing at all costs. To the glory of God, we have a main library building now. And in that main library building, there are opportunities. And I know that there are sowers in the house. And as you sow, you will reap bountifully in Jesus' name. 
Now, there is a research and uh, uh, entrepreneurship center that has been opened. Brand new, fresh, is housing our psychology program. The staff are there. And then we also have uh, the criminology, uh, security, peace, and conflict studies uh, program. Lecturers, they are there. We have our entrepreneurship center there. And we have our center for innovative built environment and smart cities. It is there. It's going to be the first in this part of the world. It's already there. And they are set to roll from this month. So, what are the uh, areas? Because I know that there are many blessed. How many of you are blessed? You know, who are here? You are blessed. You know, you are blessed. Let me see your hand. Your blessing will be permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. There are issues. I mean, a lot is going on academically. We are not, you know, I just gave you an example about how we scored 100% on all fronts. And the lecturer, I've not seen her now, the one that she, it's a she, that uh, supported that process under the Director of Academic Planning, is a lady called Dr. Chinyere Ezianya Bapa. That's submission to NUC. I mean, they could not find anything. They just said, excellent. That was what they wrote in front of Caleb University. So, but there are, or there is room for partnership. When you were coming to the campus this morning, I'm sure you saw that the road is a little in need of some slight adjustment. And uh, we want to, we believe that the presence of the governor of Lagos State is, is a plus for us and is ably represented. And the way he's smiling now, I know that good tidings have come our way. Yeah. And very soon, that road will become an expressway. Yeah. Computer science is our fastest growing program, to speak. And uh, among our new intakes, they are by a quarter. So there is room for the endowment of a college of computing building to be furnished. It has to be a college because the way we are going in our college of computing, and we know God is with us, watch out. When you talk computing in, in, in Nigeria and Africa, if you don't mention Caleb University, they say, what is the matter with you? Why have you not mentioned them? So there is room for the endowment of a college of computing. And we are believing God that God will use someone here to give us that building and equip it. Amen. We also have a college of law. The interest is incredible. The interest in our college of law is incredible. You know that two nights ago, a professor sent me a message from South Africa. And he wanted to join the faculty in our college of law. So he was asking how far is in South Africa. And I can tell you that's just a tip. I don't want to use iceberg because we don't have iceberg here. <laughs> there is room for the endowment of a college of law building. And of course, we will never forget whoever donates whatever we need because the identity cannot be, uh, cannot be missing from such a place. We also have room in our main library, there is an e-resources center that needs to be fully equipped, furnished, fully equipped. We have all the details. I believe God is going to use somebody here. I mean with your associates. Then in the School of Communication, we have a professor, Ido Ushobuwale, School of Communication and Media Studies. It's a, it's a big edifice as you are approaching this hall to your left. There is an auditorium there, and it needs to be equipped, to be furnished, to be equipped. I say, God will use somebody here in Jesus' name. Yeah. Of course. 
we also have the center that we need to really position that school of communication. What kind of center? A center of media and communication innovation. And I believe that as we speak, and when the con uh, con uh, convocation continues, we'll hear a little bit more about that one. We are all hearing about unbounded curriculum for mass communication. For the information of all, Caleb University is the secretariat of the Association of Communication Scholars and Professionals of Nigeria. The acronym is SESPN. SESPN collaborated with UNESCO to have the very first draft in a meeting that was held 2015, November 26 to 27, at the University of Lagos. That collaboration produced the very first draft of what is today the unbundled mass communication curriculum. That's what they worked on to give us what we have today. What am I saying? The Secretariat is here. So that place represents a belt for investment. God will use somebody here in Jesus' name. There are other areas. We have the guest house, you know, that uh, would uh, be an asset to us that we believe that God will also use somebody to, to do. So having said all of this, I want to thank God for your lives. I said I thank God for your lives. Why do I thank God for your life? First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. If God is showing us his mercy in ways we cannot understand, Ecclesiastes 11 verse 5 says, as you do not know the way of the spirit, or how the bones are formed in the womb of she that is with child. So you do not understand the way of God who made you. So you are a sign of wonder. And God has given you a privilege. But as we were saying yesterday, <laughs> Romans 8.31 says, If God be for us, who can be against us? If God is for you, the world, the entire world cannot stop you. But if God is not for you, even a feather can stop you. So we need to prioritize God. Brilliance is good. Intelligence is good. Family history is good. Connection is good. Jackpying may be good. But if God wants you to jackpot, you will enjoy the fruit of that land. If he doesn't want you to jackpot, you jackpot, you will, you will almost jackpot pots. That is... You will never take the wrong step in Jesus' name. Amen. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 5, God said, If you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, I will make you a pe peculiar treasure. God is ready to make you a peculiar treasure. And I'm sure from this very moment, maybe you didn't take it as seriously as that before. And you put God Matthew 6, 33 says, For seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added. You put God first. Look at the encounter that happened in Exodus 33, verse 14. God said, My presence will go with you. He was talking to Moses. In verse 15, Moses said, If your presence will not go with us, we will not go hence. That should be your determination. That you will not take any step outside of God. And I tell you, there are good things in this country. And you will be part of those good things in Jesus' name. Amen. For the parents, I want to congratulate you. My proprietor has already congratulated you. And you will eat the fruit of your labor in Jesus' name. Amen. You have invested because Caleb University is an example of investors' confidence in motion. You have invested in Caleb University, you brought your children here. You will continue to rejoice because you brought your children here in Jesus' name. In September, 
Our overall best graduating student in 2020 called me from the UK. His name is Goshen Mitteo. Goshen won a Commonwealth scholarship. And he's in the UK now on a master's degree on Commonwealth scholarship. He was simultaneously given a PhD scholarship in the US. And he told them to hold on, let him finish the Commonwealth one first. That's the stuff Caleb is made of. And I'm sure that those who are still students here, they will determine that they are going to be up front and that they will never lag behind. I want to congratulate you parents, our dear parents. And I want to once again appreciate our appreci appreciation to our proprietor who has been there for us. He's always been there for us. And our prayer is that God will continue to keep you, protect you, and help you all the way in Jesus' name. Amen. Just some, some two weeks ago, our highly revered Board of Trustees Chairman still went on an assignment. I had to go with him. That is the kind of passion driving all of those who are supporting Caleb University. God will bless you, sir. You will continue to grow stronger and stronger, sir. Our pro chancellor. I cannot thank you enough. I mean, God will continue to grant you wisdom to lead us aright and bless your family in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I, I don't know what, I can't see anything, but when the citation time comes, they will say a lot about you. And uh, I only got to see uh, Dr. John Momo after a very long time when we visited the uh, channels. Uh, we were together in Unilag 1979. It's been a long way. But we give God the glory that you are here. And uh, when uh, Mr. Lake saw me, ah, you, you know, <laughs> it's a very small world. I want to congratulate you once again. The future has started, and the future is killer. God bless you. <laughs>
We thank God for the gift of this man to our generation. And we pray that what the Lord has deposited in him to do for this generation, he will conclude successfully in Jesus' name. We are gathered also to celebrate the 12th annual convocation of Caleb University. The 12 have, have run consecutively without any break. And this is the 12th celebration. I welcome all of you as you join us in celebrating our double honors. For making this event possible in a glorious and very joyful manner, we give thanks to God and bless his holy name. For the Lord has been good to us. His unfailing love has been over us and we are confident that his faithfulness will continue with us for all times. Praise and adoration are due to him and him only. Therefore, we dedicate this celebration to the almighty God. And I seek your indulgence. I don't want that dedication to be just a few words written down. And so I politely ask you please to please stand up with me. Let us together bow down in worship and say, Lord, we worship you. And may his name be forever exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Council seizes this opportunity to grant, congratulate all members of Caleb University family. Those whom God has used so far to make the Caleb University project a huge success. Indeed, it's a huge success. If you were there at the beginning, and if you now see what has happened, you will know that it's a huge success. Time does not permit me to list all those whom God has used so far to build this university. I'll seek your permission to mention just a few symbolically. And the first in line is the visionary Dr. Oladega Adelowa Adebogu. Like I said, this campus, which we see becoming more and more beautiful as the year rolls by, was formed in his dream. Town planners, architects, and builders have just translated the dream into what we can see. And he has practically financed this university up to now from his own personal purse. There is no way one will run this gigantic project and not have difficult moments. He has solidly borne the frustration associated with building this. Council rejoices with him because of what God has done in these 15 years. But then permit me to ask all of us again to put our hands together and honor God in the life of our visitors. The grace of God will never depart from you in Jesus' name. Next, I will, it is the will of council on this 15th anniversary of the founding of this university that we celebrate those who served at one level or the other. The list is long, naturally. But I'll mention just a few again to highlight dedication that has gone into building this university. One readily remembers the 
Pioneer Pro Chancellor, Professor Nimbe Adedipe. The Pioneer Vice Chancellor, Professor Roti Mitayo. The Pioneer Registrar, Prince Bola Taiwo. And the Pioneer Head of Bostry, Mr. Adishino Abubakar. Additional advocate started as a senior accountant and he rose through the rank and today is the bossa of the university. I would like him to stand up. Because he has held this vital position, please stand up. He has held this vital position with untainted integrity for 15 full years. There has been no time when a query was set, a question mark in the mind of anybody was set against him. I'm not talking about paper query. I'm talking about people gossiping and saying, ha, don't you know? Nobody has ever said a don't you know against this man of integrity. You have honored God in your service. God will honor you in Jesus' name. Council celebrates this giant. And I ask you to please join council in appreciating them in the usual way. Thank you. Last for mention in this list of people who have worked here but definitely not the least, is our current ballet and Dolori Okobambam. Praise the Lord. Our assiduous vice chancellor, Professor Nosa Owenzibe. <laughs> Together with his principal officers, current staff and students, he has done a wonderful job in the last three years. Council gives you kudos for keeping the torch burning brightly. And praise God will sustain Caleb University along success path throughout your tenure and thereafter. The God send celebration to your individual homes in Jesus' name. This is a celebration period and I want us to please join me in celebrating the current staff and students. They will sit down, they will remain seated rather, and we will rise and give them stand innovation. Shall we go? Thank you. <laughs> Chancellor, sir, this graduate seated before you waiting for you to graciously admit them into the distinguished company of graduates of Caleb University at the major reason today, or rather the second reason we are celebrating today. Graduates, Council felicitates with you. This high profile audience, which includes state governors adequately represented, our uh, visitor himself, your own parents, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, including royal fathers, are gathered here uh, convo to convocate on your behalf. You have worked very hard to earn the prestigious degrees of Caleb University in Mortal Lagos. And you are here today receiving your hard-earned certificates. Congratulations. If there is any doubt in you, I use prestigious degree there. It's not for fancy. By nature, I'm not given to unnecessary praise. Your degree is highly worthy. And I want to cite a personal experience that supports this. I used to be here as a dean in one of the colleges, College of Pure and Applied Sciences. And naturally, I wrote 
references for quite a number of people. But two, three years ago, I left here about six years ago, I received a mail from somewhere in the US. I didn't take a particular notice of it because I never thought that information would be necessary in a situation like this. But this colleague wrote to say, thank you for all the gentlemen and ladies that you have recommended to me. I have found them extremely worthy. Could you please continue to send them? I was pleased that our products here have international standing. So as you go away, don't doubt that you have a good degree. Stand tall and contribute yourself with all the humility. Contribute all you wish with all the humility that God has given, but with the authority that your certificate also backs up. That's one part of your achievement. The other part of your achievement is that today you have become grown-ups. I see somebody smiling, and I'm smiling with you. You have become grown-ups. Becoming an adult is not just attaining the age of 18. When you get into the status, we, when people leave you on your own to live your life, when responsibility is placed on you, and you are accountable for your actions and inaction, that is adulthood. Praise the Lord. As you process out of here today, you're not processing out as you came in this morning. You are processing out as adults on which the society will place responsibility and the society will expect that you consciously, deliberately take decisions that are well informed, that will benefit society, that will glorify God, that will exalt the name of God. That is your new status. So this ceremony is marking the end of your formative years. Going out here, you are starting a brand new life. The Lord will go with you. That journey, people have, the two people who have spoken have counseled you in very, very clear terms. That journey requires a care, a very, very big care. Because it's sad that today's society has totally relegated right attitude, right character, living for the truth to the background. And vices are exalted. With you, our cherished ambassadors, this should not be so. An important part of your training here and that part is not by chance. From the very, very inception of this university, the visitors emphasized that training in the fear and love of God must be part of your activity. And that's the purpose of all the fellowships you are attending. That's the purpose of all the um, special training you are, go you are going through, especially what is tagged character in leadership. To make you act in the fear and love of God consistently. And that is the most important aspect of what you are taking out of here. Vices will remain horrible. Virtues will remain adorable. Those who have sold themselves to vices. In their sober moments, regret what they do. You will never regret whatever you do in Jesus' name. So please, as you are going out, I want to drop two things with you. It's not exclusive of all the counsels that you have had, but it 
brings them all into focus. Number one, it's not original. It's from Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. It says mature people are those who have trained themselves to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong. You must take time to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong. And not just that. To make a choice of what is right and do it. If you forget any other thing that has been shared with you, please don't forget that. You are a mature human being. You are a responsible human being. You are a tool in the hands of your creator. If you learn to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong, choose the right to do and do it. And the Lord will empower you so to do in Jesus' name. And to back that up, when you are setting goals, when you are performing, uh, celebrating yourself or doing whatever you are doing, please take with you the counsel of Apostle Paul. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and verse 9, he says this. I'm quoting him, not me. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right. Please say that after me if you wish. Graduates, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right. Shall I hear you echo it? And right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Put in, keep putting into practice all you learned about holy living and grand exploits and the God of peace will be with you. And the God of peace will be with you. That's my take home pay for you. Because take home package for you. Please don't forget this. Finally, Chancellor Sir, ladies and gentlemen, I commit the students that are graduating into the favor of God that he will impact on each one an indelible personalized mantra that will keep them focused on the path of true success. Thank you all. We have a brief musical interlude now before the Board of Trustees Chairman's um, address to the convocation. Thank you.
I respectfully invite the Chairman Board of Trustees, former Deputy Governor of Lagos State, in person of Prince Abiodu Ogunleye, to address the convocation. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. Let me start my recognition with His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babaji J. Ulushola Sonwuru, ably represented by the Special Advisor Education. I acknowledge the presence of the proprietor and visitor, the founder of the university. Prince Dr. Oladeja Adibokun. A man of ex exceptional humility. A man who makes what he does speak for him. The man who does not throw his weight about, except the weight that you see from the achievements that he has been. May the Lord continue to be with him. Let me go on with the, the Chancellor and the Chairman of the Governing Council. Professor Ajayi, the Vice Chancellor, and all members of the Council who are present. I do not want to leave behind my colleague here. I heard you will be here. You belong to a vocation, a movement that some of you may know. I won't say Mr. I will say Chief Dele Alake. You welcome here. The cabbages are present, particularly my own KBC, I am not going to figure it out. She's not close to me. I believe you are on the motor. You should have been here. I don't know where it's wrong. But I think there's somebody representing who is here. He's from the same royal family. The Registrar, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, all of them. The university workers and the students who are, going, who are graduating. I acknowledge you all. Today, it's another glorious day in the life of our institution, Caleb University, Limota, Lagos State.
here we are to send forth our graduating class of 2022 a sort of well prepared young adults who are destined to impact our nation and continent positively. I am excited because these young ones have been tutored not only to become academic and professional giants, but are well equipped with the morals needed in the transformation of our society. On behalf of the proprietor and distinguished members of our board of trustees, I welcome you here today. We use opportunities like this to affirm our commitment to the Caleb University, to see Caleb University continue to shine among the community of progressive universities in Nigeria, in particular, and Africa, and the world at large. Caleb University is making conscious efforts at setting global standards in quality education with the many PhD programs offered by the institution. The commitment of our staff to global scholarship has in no small way been emphasized with the significant appearances through university sponsorship in major research platforms, including one of our lecturers writing fellowship, winning fellowship, residency in the Netherlands, and two other, or two others winning international grants. We are related to celebrate the convocation of the 966 graduates of this number. We are glad to celebrate Moyolua Eunice Osho with CGPA of 4.86. Recall that Jesri Ijehi Iredia was the best through the last convocation with the CGPA of 4.92. We can see that our, grad our graduates are indeed blazing the trail. We must commend our parents for preparing for partnership, for part partnering with the management of the Caleb University in this unique project of molding the future of our world. It was because you chose Caleb University that your words have now become the graduates we are celebrating today. We appreciate your trust in our system. We also want to appreciate the National Universities Commission, NUC, for providing the enabling environment where Caleb University 
I know that these institutions in Nigeria are making the needed impact. I am delighted at the performance of Caleb University in the various NUC resource verification exercises which have granted the university the opportunity to run programs that catch up with the essence of contem contemporary humanity. At this point, we must appreciate in particular the role played by the proprietor, visitor, and founder, Dr. Oladega Adebogu, in the relentless provision of funding to enable quality infrastructural development and the University Council led by a distinguished scholar, Professor Sonde Ajayi, in steering the policy which in the policy wheels of Columbia University Lagos. We also appreciate our dynamic Vice Chancellor, Professor Nusa Owens Ebe, and his highly resourceful team, and indeed the entire university community for their tireless efforts in ensuring that Caleb University sustains its drive at being a major player in the Nigerian university system. Ending my address, let me leave the graduating class of 2022 with some words of encouragement. You are the reason why we gather here today. We have invested so much in training you. And I'm happy that you have not disappointed us. We therefore charge you, as you go out into the world, to be good ambassadors of Caleb University. Invest your creative energies in solving the problems of our society and do not, do not let your parents and God down. Many of you have already commenced the mandatory National Youth Service Corps NYSC program. I charge you to let have the entrepreneurship spirit in you towards helping the nation and your family. Stick to the noble ideals and core values of Caleb University, which include godliness, innovation, service, integrity, teamwork, excellence, and creativity. I join everyone here present today to felicitate with you and wish you well 
in the journey of life. I appreciate everyone for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to recognize the presence of the Anyogbunya of Ikurudu, Oba, His Royal Majesty Oba Kabiru Adewale Shutobi. Welcome, His Royal Majesty. He has come with other traditional ways. Thank you. We also have Mr. Wahid Adeniro Kasal, Permanent Secretary, the Office of the Special Advisor on Education here, representing the interest of the governor as well. With us today, is someone who is dear to us. He's also our parent. He's been of immense support to us, as you will get to hear when we begin to mention the awards. And he is the chairman of Imota LCDA in person of Chief Wasiu Kunle Aguru. today is a special guest amongst us in person of Louis Odion, Senior Technical Assistant on Media to the President. You're welcome, sir. The Chancellor, sir, I want to invite the Convocation Lecturer, Founders Day Lecturer as well, in person of Mr. Babatunde Fajemiroku, FCII, is the CEO of Insurance PLC, and he will be speaking on digital disruptions, financial inclusion, startups, and the challenge of youth creativity. You're welcome, sir. All protocols duly observed as earlier established. It's my pleasure to give this brief citation of Mr. Babatunde Fajemiroku, FCII, the CEO Managing Director of ICO Insurance. Mr. Babatunde Fajemiroku began in his early years to take his education very seriously. He knew that for him to pursue any useful career in life, obtaining the right and functional kind of education was key. And so, as a young man, he began by un undertaking the bachelor's degree in business economics from Glasgow in the United Kingdom. You are free to clap, please, because please, you can clap here. 
Yes, he proceeded to enroll for an MBA program in finance as espas, uh, the emphasis at the Booth School of Business of the University of Chicago. That's number two. He did not stop there. He went ahead to register for the master's program in business information technology systems at the University of Strathclyde in the United Kingdom. And he emerged from that program with a distinction. His career takeoff is a little bit interesting and familiar, and you will find out why. In 2001, he worked as a visiting lecturer in the Division of Economics and Enterprise at the Glasgow Caledonian University for two years. He decided to stop that suddenly for reasons best known to him. It is possible that he discovered that academia would not pay as much as industry. But then he moved on, and very quickly, in 2003, he joined, he joined Accenture Financial Services as an analyst. He would later show preference for mergers and acquisitions. He moved on further on. After five years, precisely, in 2008, he left Accenture for Cap Gemini Consulting, sir, in the UK. And his focus and task was to transform the UK government projects for success and greater glory. And it is recorded that he performed extraordinarily well on that call. Put your hands together for him. All this while, Tunde, as is fondly called, tried like any responsible young man to establish a career and grow his way up the ladder. Hardly did he know at this point in time that sooner than later he would be wearing the cap of the CEO, Managing Director, Ico Insurance, PLC. As it were, destiny was carefully leading him along the way without a modicum of confusion, but he did not realize it. It was not until 2009 that Tunde joined Ico Insurance PLC as Chief Information Officer. With his international background and experience, he set out to distinguish himself creditably. He found himself executing some value-enhancing projects within the organization. And he rose quickly to the position of Chief Operating Officer in 2013. From here on, he moved up to occupy the position of Chief Business Officer, a position he held until his appointment as Managing Director CEO in 2019. His effective growth strategy, as well as rewarding business plans, have strengthened brand value over time. This, is also this has also led to stronger competitiveness within the industry itself. The Chancellor, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, maybe I should add that Mr. Tunde Fajo Miroko's business empire does not begin at end with ICO Insurance PLC. He is simultaneously a non-executive director of Food Concepts PLC, a board director at Xerox Corporation, and so on and so forth. Our esteemed convocation lecturer is a fellow of the Nigeria, of the Society of Underwriting Professionals and the Chartered Institute of Insurance UK. He is therefore undoubtedly a thoroughbred chartered insurer. He is happily married and blessed with children. The Chancellor, sir, let me proudly present to you a veritable professional, an exemplary gentleman indeed, a mover and shaker in the industry, and without doubt, a tiger in his own chosen area. Please welcome the Convocation Lecturer for his lecture. Thank you, sir.
Good morning. Your Excellencies, Executive Governor of Lagos State, ably represented by the Special Advisor of Education, the Proprietor of the University, the Royal Majesties and Highnesses present, the Chairman and members of the Board of Trustees, the Chancellor, the Pro-Chancellor, the Vice-Chancellor, Chairman of Governing Council, members of the Governing Council, and of the Senate. I also recognize the recipients of the honorary degrees, Dr. John Momo, founder, Channels Media Group, and of course, Mr. Adelia Lake. A pleasure to meet you, sirs. <laughs> distinguished staff of Caleb University and graduates, distinguished parents of, and, of graduates, distinguished media personnel, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My topic today is digital disruptions, financial inclusion startups, and the challenge of youth creativity. I've been given 30 minutes for this lecture, so I will try to follow that time or move even faster. Ladies and gentlemen, I am deeply honored uh, to be here for your graduation from one of the finest institutions of higher learning in Nigeria today. In coming with a topic to discuss with you, I wanted to touch on something that is topical to the Nigerian experience. As I thought more about it, I asked myself, where else should I start but with the people before me today? And so I will start with what I believe that the youth of a nation you all represent. There is a reason that the potential of a country is usually captured in the youthfulness of its population. Young people represent vitality, energy, and endless possibility. In many cases, they are the forefront of new innovations simply because they are relatively more open to change. As a result, a lot of creativity that drives economic growth over time, a key component of the political stability of the nation, comes from the youth. Consequently, when there are no avenues or opportunities to express this creativity, the result is often political instability, which can take many forms. Today, Nigeria's population is estimated at 215 million people. Roughly under the age of 18 are about 70%. And under the age of 35, if I look at ICO insurance, the median or the mean age is closer to 30. With youth unemployment at about 40%, there are clearly not enough opportunities for young people in Nigeria. This is the result of insufficient investments in infrastructure that encourages production, consumption, and creates employment. As of today, Nigeria's infrastructure deficit is about three trillion, meaning that the country will require investments in infrastructure of about 100 billion yearly for the next 30 years. Nigeria has clear and present challenges, which can only be solved by government leading from the front in conjunction with the private sector to accelerate growth. Innovation is critical to unlocking Nigeria's economic potential. We cannot afford to rely on old technologies to catch up with the rest of the world. We will have to embrace new technologies to solve our pressing problems. Because of the sheer amount of innovation that has occurred in the past 20 years, it is often easy to forget that a lot of growth and development over the centuries, both economic and social, have had a lot to do with the gradual and often changes in technology and how they affected our lives. 
For example, the Romans pioneered the roads, which were the foundation of our organizational capacity that underpinned the Roman Empire. The Industrial Revolution between the 1700s and the early 1900s had significant effects on the participation of women and minorities in the workforce, increasing labor participation and economic growth. These eras were all characterized by innovations that were revolutionary in their time. Over the last 20 years, however, the rate of innovation has been rapid, leading to significant changes in the way that people transact, connect, and consume. Here are some examples. In 1998, Google made information accessible. For some people here, that's all they actually know. For many of the people here, they know a time before Google. Two young men were working in a garage with an ambition to organize the, organ the world's information, and oh boy, they succeeded. As Google became a phenomenon, it made information accessible. In, tw in 2004, Facebook enabled the power of people. What started as a quirky project ended up building momentum in colleges and eventually transformed the way people connected digitally. Facebook, with the power of people, inspired many connections and transformations. Int introduced the concept of social in every product, thereby allowing people to become or come together digitally. Of course, we all know about Apple. Launched the iPhone, mobile computing, and connections became ubiquitous. Apple also launched the Apple Store platform that, of course, allows anyone to sell and reach people at scale. We all know what has happened with Uber, connecting drivers and users without actually having any inventory. There's a common thread with these examples, the use of technology. However, technology is not really the point. The point was they were all solving a problem. Google organized previously amorphous information on the internet. Its algorithm was just much better than other search engines at the time. Apple, through its iPhone, which was not the first smartphone, created a device that connected users to developers in a way that established players had not at the time. I can go on and on. In each of these industries, there were already established dominant players. So there's a chance for each and every one of you. In search, there was already Yahoo. In social media, there was MySpace. In telephony, there was BlackBerry and Nokia. Who remembers the Nokia 3310? In transportation, there were traditional taxi cabs. These traditional players were comfortable and had arguably lost a view of their most important stakeholder, their customers. If you look deeper, you will see that another thread runs through these examples. Convenience. Each of these solutions made the customer's lives easier. In such a fast-paced world, people will flock to solutions that make their lives easier. This is what lies at the heart of disruptive innovations. On startups in Nigeria, the 2010s were significant. With innovations, especially in the financial technology on fintech space, revolutionizing the way Nigerians made transactions and supercharging economic activity. This was the decade of the startup in Nigeria. In recent years, the Nigerian startup ecosystem has seen significant growth, with many new companies entering the market and providing innovative solutions to various challenges. These startups are playing a crucial role in driving economic growth, creating jobs, and promoting entrepreneurship in this country. As of 2022, Nigerian startups employ a combined total of over 20,000 people. 
the highest on the continent. The fintech space accounts for almost half of this with about 9,000 jobs. It helps that this period was characterized by globally low interest rates, which increased access to funding for these startups. In the absence of these funds, startup funds would have been restricted to traditional sources of funding like banks, which could be prohibitively more expensive and impatient. Equity capital, unlike debt, is more suitable for early stage companies, enabling them to focus on the investments they made to accelerate growth. Between 2015 and 2022, 383 startups in Nigeria raised over $2 billion, more than doubling the amounts raised in South Africa and Egypt in the period. This speaks to the investors' expectations of the Nigerian market and the economy in the short to medium term. This is despite all the issues we currently face in the nation. These expectations are driven by Nigerians' favorable demographics, particularly its youthful population. The rapid developments in technology that spurred these innovations in the West also had a similar impact here. Over the last 10 years or so, we have seen technologies fundamentally change the way financial services and commerce are carried out in Nigeria, with startups like Paystack, Flutterwave, Piggyvest, using technology to provide digital payment solutions. My hope is that graduates from Caleb would also foster this in the near future. The digital payment solutions open up so many opportunities to create economic activity and support e-commerce across Nigeria. Other startups like Jumia, Conga, Mall of Africa, have leveraged these solutions to reduce the friction involved in making transactions. Of course, the global landscape has changed, especially in the last couple of years. We've had COVID, we've had the pandemic, and especially in the last one year, global inflation has gone up. In Nigeria, it's about 22%, and has forced central banks to increase benchmark rates to reduce spending and curb inflation. As a result, capital has become more expensive, with investors increasingly moving focus from growth to profitability. Businesses that seek capital today must have a well-defined path to cash flow positive status before raising capital. So for those of you looking to open businesses in the digital space, please take cognizance of the changes in the valuation assumptions. I expect that this will affect the startup ecosystem in Nigeria, but it doesn't change the investment premise. Coming to financial inclusion, while economic growth is crucial for the stability of the society and state, it is especially important that this growth be inclusive, growing income and wealth among all income groups, not just the top 5%. Nigeria is home to 133 million people in multidimensional poverty. These people are often in remote areas in the country, mainly generating income through subsistence farming. The income and wealth inequality in the country is staggering, with most of the increases both accruing to the top to 10% of the population. This is not good for the nation. As we have seen above, access to financial services can radically change people's lives, opening up opportunities that they would not otherwise have. Here, case studies from other countries who have succeeded can give us some insights into how to solve these problems here. A good one is Kenya, where M-Pesa has revolutionized the way people transact business. Research indicates that the introduction of mobile money solutions in these areas significantly improve the quality of lives of the poor, increasing their consumption, making them more likely to access help when needed because it is so convenient to receive funds. The fact that the service was needed did not mean it would succeed. Remember that innovation for its own sake does not guarantee adoption. Solutions must solve a real-world problem 
to sufficiently scale. For M-Pesa, two things are critical to its adoption. And I want you to remember this. It was launched by Safaricom, a trusted telecoms provider in Kenya. Many of these people who didn't have access to financial services already had phone lines and had established trust with the company. Two, the government of Kenya, luckily we have Lagos State here, adopted the solution at its most to the populace, creating a large cache of users early and enabling the company to reach the critical mass. Today, 15 years after M-Pesa's launch, they have 51 million users across several African countries. On the back of these solutions, previously financially excluded segments of the population now had access to other financial services like credit to grow their businesses and insurance to protect them, making their financial positions more resilient and giving them a platform to rise out of poverty. Nigeria today faces many of these problems. According to a 2020 EFINA financial inclusion report, 36% of Nigerian adults, adult population, are unable to access financial services. 36%. For those of you in computer science here, I hope you are taking note of these opportunities. A further 14% only have access to informal financial services. In Kenya, only 11% of the population are financially excluded, with over 80% having access to informal or formal financial services. It is therefore more likely that economic growth in Kenya will be more inclusive than in Nigeria, simply because more people have access to financial services. It is important to note that Nigeria has made significant progress. Please, don't get me wrong. Over the last few years, private enterprises supported by regulation has improved financial inclusion in Nigeria over time. As of 2020, only about 22% of Nigeria had access to some form of financial services. Today, the number is about 64%. Focused regulation by government as well as investment of private capital has enabled this improvement. In 2022, the central bank granted payment service banking licenses to MTN and Airtel, the largest mobile networks by number of users. The license allows these companies to set up operations to provide basic financial services across the country. These companies have made investments in infrastructure across the country and have a vast network of agents making the provision of these services possible. In addition, these companies have established trust, trust with these solutions for these unserved and underserved population, making it more likely that their solutions will be adopted. Ladies and gentlemen, technology has enabled many of these challenges dramatically reducing the cost of reaching these customers. What's the challenge of youth creativity? Despite the various challenges we face, the youth of this country, you have, you have shown that with determination and creativity, you can make the country better. We've heard from the vice chancellor, we've heard from the pro-chancellor, we've heard as well from the BOT chairman saying that Caleb University graduates will be able to make that change. And I trust that you will, in Jesus' name. The various innovations we have seen in healthcare, financial services, e-commerce, and so on, speak to the unbreakable spirit that you all have. However, it is clear that we are not operating at our full potential. One of the biggest challenges facing youth creativity is access to resources. Many young people, especially from those from low-income families or underserved communities, do not have the same opportunities to access resources as art supplies, music equipment, or technology that can help them develop their creative skills. Without access to these resources, young people may not be able to fully explore their creative potential. Here we see the importance of financial inclusion and inclusive economic growth. It is important that basic infrastructure is available for creativity to thrive. For low-income families, access to financial services, 
is critical and can be a difference between a life of poverty and a life of upward social and economic mobility. Today, I'll start with there is a role for academia and the private sector to play in this particular area. Universities are uniquely placed to create opportunities for young people to express themselves. By creating curriculums that prepare students for job markets as well as others that resonate with students' entrepreneurial leanings, they can create opportunities for the faculty, for students to express themselves and unleash their creativity. There's a need to be open to receiving feedback and be at the cutting edge of the latest research in their fields. For administrators, it is important to maintain productive relationship with the private sector to get a sense of the demand side for labor and tailor curriculums appropriately. When we look at the JAPA phenomenon, in Canada, for example, the universities work with the private sector to identify the gaps that are currently in the current Canadian market. And then they come to markets like Nigeria and Caleb University to get some of our best talents. Like the Vice Chancellor said, hopefully there'll be some Jack Bada have you? to back to Nigeria. Today, ICO Insurance undertakes a number of initiatives in support of UN Sustainability Development Goals. This is testament to our belief that our company has a responsibility to invest in our society. We currently support eight Sustainability Development Goals, one of which is Quality Education, which advocates for inclusive and equitable education for all. For us, it, this is not just an attempt to give back. It is a signal of our faith in Nigeria's youth, a recognition that our country can only maximize its potential when all of us, regardless of background, can individually fully express ourselves and fulfill our dreams. A quality education is essential to that vision. I am an employer of labor. I run a lot of interviews. I see the gaps in our country. It is in furtherance of this objective that I'm announcing that ICO Insurance Sustainability Team will engage the university to provide scholarship programs to assist students over the next three to five years. And we would also provide a one time gift for the library and the e-learning center. My sustainability team did not allow me to give a figure. So Vice Chancellor, I can't give you a figure until we discuss afterwards. Finally, to you students, as you leave here to, be to begin your careers, you must understand that you are privileged to be graduating from such a great institution. I would like to conclude with a couple of personal experiences. I have worked for four organizations as the MC was so gracious in introducing me. I've worked for two years, starting with Glasgow Caledonian University, then management consulting firms, Accenture Nigeria, and Capgemini London. I now work with ICO Insurance, where I've been for almost 14 years. In my first year in Accenture, I resigned after a year to pursue business with the aim to be rich and to be like the entrepreneurs in my family. The business failed woefully. I was 26 years old. I was young. I picked myself back up and started again. Accenture was gracious enough to accept me back and I decided to take a different path. The first thing is to never give up. Whatever you do must be done well, and it is important to make relationships. Another pivotal time in my career was deciding to join ICO. ICO did not fit the mold. As the MC said, I was recruited as a CIO. At the time, ICO used to have servers 
as desktop computers. In 2009, I took a significant pay cut leaving Capgemini London to join ICO. However, my thought was I had prayed to God for the opportunity to join the financial services industry and leave the consulting world, world for good. This seemed like the opportunity, even though it was back in Nigeria and had a pay cut. I decided to take it anyway. I joined ICO in 2009, and since that time, I have been blessed with great exposure to impactful work, worked with amazing people, trained well as an insurance and finance professional. It has been hard, but it's been beyond my wildest dreams. The second lesson here is the need for a leap of faith. A strong belief that this is the Lord's plan for you. Never follow the crowd, Jackpot included. Self-audit and be truthful to yourself. You must all recognize that each journey is unique. Work hard. Faith is important. And finally, identifying mentors, coaches, and sponsors for your life is critical to success as an entrepreneur or as an employee. This places a burden of responsibility on you. The investments that have been made in you throughout your life have brought you to this very moment where, like the speaker said, you are now adults. I am sure that you have worked hard, but more is expected of you. We are all waiting for the investments in you to bear fruit. Because of the opportunity you have been given, you have a responsibility to fully express yourselves and live up to your full potential. Think creatively. Be determined. I have every faith that as you grow in your careers, whether as entrepreneurs or employees, the fulfillment of your potential will bring Nigeria closer to where we are supposed to be. There is a long way to go, but I have never been more optimistic about the future. You might find that very strange. I have every hope that you will make all of us proud. Finally, remember, as Thomas A. Edison, the co-founder of General Electric said, many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Never give up. Thanks. That price is actually a computer tablet. Please collect it before you go. Thank you. Best graduating student with a CGP of 4.50 and above in the architecture program who has not spent more than the minimum period for the degree program goes to Olodeoku Moshokwe Oluwa S. <laughs> Recursively, we want to announce the prize for the best graduating student with a CGP of 4.50 and above in criminology and security studies in person of ACN Deborah Okokon. <laughs> Pause for a moment. 
We have the best graduating students in each college. And we actually conducted the convocation ceremonies for other colleges the day before and the other day. Each one of them has a cash, a cash prize, pardon me, of 200,000 era each, donated by the Emota LCDA chairman. That's Chief Wasiu Aguru. Thank you very much, sir. Before I go on also, permit me to recognize the representative of the Lagos Commissioner of Police, uh, that's Assistant Commissioner of Police, uh, Omole Oga. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Departmental prizes for postgraduate students. The best graduating student with a CGPA of 4.50 and above in the architecture program who has not spent more than the minimum period for the degree is going to Okubule Omolara Abiodun. <laughs> with a CGP of 4.50 and above in the accounting program who has not spent more than the minimum period for the degree program goes to Ola Tokumbo Elias Abisoye <laughs> Best graduating student with a CGP of 4.50 and above in the computer science program who has not spent more than the minimum period for the degree program goes to Oyelo or Timothy Olaniro. <laughs> For the best graduating student with a CGP of 4.50 and above in the finance program, who has not spent more than the minimum period for the degree program, goes to Adioti Michael Olua Shegun. The prize for the best graduating student with a CGP of 4.50 and above in the political science program, who has not spent more than the minimum period for the degree program, goes to Aikomo Oduola. for the best graduating student with a CGP of 4.50 and above in the International Relations Program who has not spent more than the minimum period for the degree program goes to Otu Cherry Chica Favor.
student with a CGP of 4.50 and above in the economics program who has not spent more than the minimum period for the degree program is Olorode Rafiu. Olorode. Sorry. Best graduating student with a CGP of 4.50 and above in the mass communication program who has not spent more than the minimum period for the degree program. The prize goes to Diala Esther Oluchi. <laughs> The best graduating student with a CGP of 4.50 and above in the MBA program, who has not spent more than the minimum period for the degree program, is Adeyaye Oluwa Femishola. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The Chancellor, sir, the persons whose names are listed in the brochure, having fulfilled the requirements of the status and regulations of Caleb University, and having been found worthy both in character and in learning, wish to be received as graduates of a university holding the bachelor degrees of their various colleges. I hereby invite the Dean, College of Environmental Sciences and Management, Professor Oluwale Alagbe, to present the graduates from the college. Will the graduates in the College of Environmental Sciences and Management please stand and remain standing? Our Chancellor, sir, in the name and by the authority of Senate, I present to you the following candidates, those present and those unavoidably absent, from whom I stand proxy, whose names appear on the list, who have successfully completed their bachelor degree program, and who have been found worthy, both in character and learning, to be admitted to the degree of Bachelor of Science in Architecture of Caleb University. By the authority vested in me as Chancellor, I confer upon you all the degree of Bachelor of Science in Architecture of the College of Environmental Sciences and Management, Caleb University. Please remain standing. Admission to higher degrees. The Chancellor, sir, the Dean College of Postgraduate Studies will now present the persons whose names are listed in the brochure, having fulfilled the requirements of the statutes and regulations of Caleb University, and having been found worthy both in character and in learning, who have qualified for higher degrees of a university in the 2021-2022 academic session. I hereby invite the Dean, College of Postgraduate Studies, 
Professor Teju Shomori to present the graduates from the college. Our Chancellor, sir, in the name and by the authority of Senate, I have the honor to present to you those students of the College of Postgraduate Studies. Will the graduates in the College of Postgraduate Studies please stand and remain standing? Our Chancellor, sir, in the name and by the authority of Senate, I have the honor to present to you those students of the College of Postgraduate Studies who have successfully completed their Master of Science degree in Accounting, Architecture, Computer Science, Economics, Finance, International Relations, political science, master in business administration, and postgraduate diploma in accounting, economics, international relations, mass communication, political science, and computer science. Those present and those unavoidably absent and for whom I stand proxy to be admitted to the higher degree of Caleb University. By the authority vested in me as Chancellor, I confer upon you all the degree of Master of Science, Master in Business Administration, and Postgraduate Diploma in the various programs in the College of Postgraduate Studies of Caleb University. I can feel your excitement. Okay. Now you have your tassels on the right. I have mine on the left. Yours is on the right. Want to perform the turning of the tassel function now. So because you are now graduates of this university, Kindly turn your tassels from right to left now. Thank you very much. I actually can't feel your excitement. Okay, you may please be seated. Next in line, we have confirmant of honorary degrees. The first on the list actually goes to the governor of Lagos State in person of Governor Baba Jide Olushola Sonwolu. He's, he's represented here today by the permanent secretary in the office of the special advisor on education in person of Mr. Wahid Kasali. Governor is 
unavoidably absent uh, because of the exigencies of the moment um, occasioned by the electioneering process as well as some other assignments, both uh, state assignments as well as uh, national assignments. But he has promised that we will have an event where he will be robed, where the degree will be conferred formally on him, and that will be in his office. Uh, as a result of that, uh, all other activities regarding his investiture uh, will remain pending till then. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. So I, I want him to give his remarks now. Uh, I'll hand the mic over to Mr. Kasali for him to give some remarks on behalf of the governor for two minutes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, His Excellency, the former Deputy Governor of Lagos State, sir. The visitor and the proprietor, the visioner of that great university, Dr. Oladega Adebogun, sir. Please, a round of applause. the chancellor of this great university, the pro-chancellor and chairman of council of the university, the vice chancellor and the principal officers of the university, the honorary awardees here today, Dr. Leke, Dele Alake, our own, a former commissioner in Lagos State. Uh, I, was, I was going to another route, and uh, uh, the honorable former commissioner knows where I was going. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Dr. John Momo, sir. Please, a round of applause for the deserving awardees here today. Our distinguished uh, convocation lecturer today. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. Our highly revered royal father, Ahuna Yogbure of Okurudu Kingdom, Oba Abdul Kabir Adewale Shotobi, Kabye Sisa, Kabye Siu, and the Ade Ayogbure in Council here present. The chairman of Imota LCDA. And our leader is here, and he needs to be recognized because he has contributed meaningfully to the development of the center of excellence. That's our own leader, Dr. Kauli Olusonya. Let me call him that for being in the academic environment. Thank you very much. Our graduates here today, parents, I want to extend all courtesies to everyone here. Mr. Governor would have loved to be here, if not because of exigency of work, national assignment, state assignment, and preparation for the official visit of the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Federal Republic of Nigeria to Lagos State to come and commission the good work of Mr. Governor towards the delivery, effective delivery of the dividend of democracy to the good people of Lagos State. It is an honor and a well-deserved for giving Mr. Governor that award. The honorary award is not just for Mr. Governor is deserving but to the good people of Lagos State, to all those who have contributed meaningfully 
even to the development of the state. We must praise here the visioner of this university, Dr. Adebogun, who has made this impact by pushing that boundary even right from kindergarten to tertiary level. Please give him a round of applause. Because he has laid that foundation right from kindergarten even to this tertiary level and that is why we are having this presentation here today. Particularly the 12th convocation and the 15th uh, Founders Day ceremony happening, taking place here today. I want to commend the Chancellor, the Pro-Chancellor and the, uh, the VC for the managerial excellence that has been displayed towards the producing quality graduates for Nigeria. With the tenacity of the visioner, the commitment of the proprietor, it is no doubt that Caleb University has produced creative leaders. Caleb University has produced innovative leaders. Caleb University has produced critical thinkers. Caleb University has produced solution providers. Please, a round of applause for this afternoon. These have been attested to with the meaningful contribution of graduates of this great university to the development of Nigeria as a nation. On behalf of Mr. Governor, I want to assure the university that we will continue to be a strategic partner to the university. <laughs> Knowing fully well that for us in Lagos State, education has been given its place because it's the bedrock of all things, even for the development of any nation. That is why, as encapsulated in the team's agenda of Mr. Governor, education and technology occupy the third pillar of that agenda. And Mr. Governor has been strongly committed to, the, to that pillar, and that is why we have seen massive improvement, development in the education sector of Lagos State. In Lagos State today, our education has been 21st century driven. All our policies, all programs have been in, the, in tandem with the 21st century demand. Education followed United Nations standards in terms of relevance, in terms of quality, and in terms of accessibility. Please, a round of applause for Mr. Governor. With all of this development, the Lagos State Government will always partner with the best of breed, knowing fully well that the 21st century is about partnership, it's about collaboration. We cannot do it alone. I want to congratulate the graduates of today. You are going to the world. You have been fully equipped academically, morally, and spiritually. The world is there for you. Go to the world and unleash your potential. The Lord will continue to be your strength. I want to congratulate everyone, and particularly the awardees of today, and congratulate the, uh, the university and wish the university more success in the future. Thank you all for listening, and God bless. Thank you very much, sir. The Chancellor, sir, permit me to recognize the Divisional Police Officer for Imota and the one for Agboa. The DPO for Imota, CSP Justin Oro, is here present. We recognize you. Thank you. We also have the DPO for Agboa, 
CSP Bolaji Olubenga, you are recognized. Confirmant of Honorary Degrees. The Chancellor, sir. Section 4, subsection 1F of the Caleb University Law 2007 gives the university the power to confer honorary degrees, fellowships, and other academic titles. In line with the above, the Governing Council and the Senate of Caleb University have resolved that the honorary degree of Doctor of Mass Communication, Honorary Corsa, be conferred on Mr. Deji, Mr. Dele Alake. I therefore call upon the Chancellor to confer the degree of Doctor of Mass Communication of the University with the rights and the privileges attached thereto. May I call on the University Orator, Dr. Charles Onwachuku, to present Mr. Dele Alake for the award. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, the Chancellor, I extend all protocols down to the end and I observe them one by one on the strength of earlier established you know, uh, status. I will go ahead to present a brief citation of Mr. Oladele Henry Alake. Mr. Yes, thank you. Mr. Oladele Henry Alake is the quintessential technocrat. In fact, he is a technocrat of technocrats. And that runs down through him from the beginning up to now. Born 67 years ago in a Kitty state of Nigeria, he went through a normal and peaceful childhood. As a young adult, he enrolled in 1975 to study political science at the University of Lagos. Immediately after the youth service, Mr. Alake went on for his master's degree in mass communication, still in his alma mater. He later started to build his career at the Lagos State Broadcasting Service as a sub-editor. In that same year, 1979, he would become the current affairs officer. Later, he left to take up a position as a member editorial board of the Concord newspapers. He moved on from there to become editor of the Sunday Concord in 1989. Somehow, he managed to combine that assignment with the role of special advisor to the late Chief MKO Abiola during the heydays of his politics. He actually finally became the editor of National Concord in 1995. Four years later, Mr. Lake would reinvent himself, becoming Special Advisor on Information and Strategy, Lagos State. It is on record that he transformed the former Ministry of Information, Youth, Sports and Culture into a more focused and functional ministry. That's a good place for an applause. Mr. Alake was appointed Honorable Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Lagos State, in 1999. As Commissioner, this awardee set out to restructure, rejuvenate, 
revitalize and redesign the ministry to be more effective and more efficient. Suffice it to say that he moved information from being a peripheral adjunct in state administration to the central strategic center of corporate governance. Between 2007 and 2010, Mr. Lake occupied the post of Chief Executive Officer, Continental Broadcasting Services. I expect you to applaud there. Today, as he stands before you, he is Vice Chairman, TVC Communications, owners of TVC and Radio Continental. Mr. Lake is a recipient of a good number of awards and honors including ECOWAS International Gold Award, that deserves an applause, Public Service Award 2006, that deserves an applause, Award of Excellence, that was given in 2000, and the Fellowship Award of 2002. I expect you to applaud here. Mr. Oladele Henry Alake is also a fellow of the Nigeria Guild of Editors, and a fellow of the Academy of Entrepreneurial Studies. You can applaud there. This wonderful gentleman is happily married and his union is blessed with children. The Chancellor, sir, I present to you for the confirmation of doctorate degree honoris causa, Mr. Alake Henry Oladele. Thank you very much. By the authority vested in me as Chancellor and in accordance with the provisions of the Caleb University Law, I confer on you the degree of Doctor of Mass Communication, Honoris Causa, of Caleb University with the rights and privileges here to. <laughs> The Chancellor, sir, also in line with Section 4, Subsection 1F of the Caleb University Law 2007, which gives the university the power to confer honorary degrees, fellowships, and other academic titles, I call upon Dr. John Momo for his honorary degree of Doctor of Business and Entre Entrepreneurial Studies, Honoris Causa, of the university where the rights and the privileges attached thereto. May I call on the university orator, Dr. Charles Onwachuku, to present Dr. John Momo for the award.
Yes, uh, Dr. John Momo, as you heard, this is not the first on the list of uh, honor honorary doctorate degrees that he has earned. And uh, by the time this short ceremony is over, he would have added another befitting feather to his cap. John, as he's fondly called, holds a BSc Mass Communication, University of Lagos. He's also a proud holder of the MSc degree in International Law and Diplomacy from the same institution. Additionally, John Momo has received diplomas from the University of Lagos and the Thomas Foundation Cardiff in Wales, UK. Before founding Channels Television in 1995, Mr. Momo worked variously as news anchor, senior reporter, and producer for, the, for Nigeria's national radio and television stations. John Momo is the chairman of Channels Media Group and chairman and chief executive officer of Channels Television as we know it. He's a renowned broadcast journalist with a vast experience spanning more than four decades. Clap if you want to clap, that's why. In, in just 25 years, this gentleman has gone from being a star employee to creating a multi-million dollar media enterprise employing over 400 staff across Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world. Interestingly, he has achieved this feat with the same business model that analysts predicted will fail. Now we can see that the analysts failed and he succeeded. Put your hands together, please. His vision, passion, and tenacity are balanced by a willingness to reinvent and apply caution where necessary. John Momo's commitment to excellence has seen him winning awards and recognitions over several decades across the whole world. These include the Nigerian Merit Award for the News Anchor of the Year. I expect you to applaud. The Nigerian Union of Journalists Award for the Newscaster of the Year. I expect you to applaud. The Constituency for Africa Award for Excellence in Broadcasting, Washington, D.C., USA. Planet, Planet Africa Award for Entrepreneurship, Canada. There are many more awards to come, but I'll proceed from here. John is the president of the University of Lagos alumni. He's the immediate past president. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Yes. Yes. He is the immediate past president of the Shevning Alumni Association of Nigeria. He also serves as a member of the governing councils of the University of Lagos and Elizade University. I expect you to applaud here. John Momo is a member of the International Academy of Television, Arts and Sciences based in New York. He serves as a juror on the annual International Emmy Awards, Awards UK, organized by the Association for International Broadcasting. Yes, if you want to clap, clap wholeheartedly. Do not pretend to clap. Thank you, God bless you. His television station, that's Channel TV, is the only Nigerian and indeed African broadcaster to have won the Television of the, of the Station, Station of the Year Award in record of 15 times. Yes. And believe it or not, seven of those times he won consecutively. He kept winning. He just kept winning. He just kept winning. John Momo is the immediate past chairman of the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria as well. Born. And he's the first ever private broadcaster to be elected to such an exalted position. I expect you to clap. Now here are more awards. He's a distinguished fellow of the Nigerian Leadership Initiative. He's also a distinguished fellow of the Nigerian Guild of Editors. You are not clapping. 
as well as the Nigerian Institute of Journalism and also the Nigerian Institute of Information Management. Added to that list is the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, as well as the Institute of Credit Administration. John is a Red Cross ambassador. He sits on the board of many non-governmental organizations. Yes, yes, yes. Including Peace Tech Limited, United States, as well as the Institute of Peace, Washington. Constituency for Africa, Washington DC as well. Yes, Special Olympics, Nigeria. University of Lagos Advancement Board, the Sickle Cell Foundation, Tri-State Heart Foundation, and so on and so forth. He is also a proud recipient of many more acknowledgments and recognitions, and this will include the Open, the National Productivity Order of Merit Award, the National Honor of Officer of the Niger (OON). Lifetime Achievement Award by the Nigerian Information Society, Entrepreneur of the Year by the Faith Foundation, Distinguished Alumni Award from the Lagos Business School, the ZIC Award for Entrepreneurship, Entrepreneurship of the Year by the Institute of Directors Nigeria, and so on and so on and so on. There's a long list here, and I don't want to bore you with all of that, but sir, we acknowledge you fully, we recognize you. John is happily married, married to Shola, whom we all know, and they are blessed with three wonderful children. The Chancellor, sir, I present to you the Wonder Man with the Midas touch in the Nigeria television broadcast industry, Mr. John Momo, for the award of Honoris Causa. The authority vested in me as the Chancellor and in accordance with the provisions of the Caleb University Law, I confer on you the degree of Doctor of Business and Entrepreneurial Studies Honoris Causa of Caleb University with the rights and privileges here too. Please get ready.
We want to invite the family members of uh, Dr. Dele Alake present here to come forward for snapshots with him. Um, his son is also here. He's a special advisor in the Lagos State uh, Government. Please come up, sir.
Thank you. The Chancellor, sir, we crave your permission to present the Founders Day Lecturers uh, Award to the lecturer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you are clapping, make it a good clap. I want to recognize the presence of the Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Lagos State, in person of uh, Mr. Honorable Benga Omotosho. Thank you, sir, for coming. Thank you. We call, with the permission of the uh, Chancellor, sir, on call on Dr. Dele Alake for a brief remark. Thank you so much, sir. The uh, visitor to the Caleb University, proprietor, founder, initiator, the visioner, and the one that God has used in establishing this very profound, magnificent, excellent institution that has turned out a most exciting quality crop of human beings to contribute most significantly to the development of not just Imota, not just Lagos State, not just Nigeria, but the entire universe. I salute you, sir. <laughs> to the Chancellor, Pro-Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, Chairman, Board of Trustees, all staff, all the eggheads, the academia, the management, the graduates, the parents, our KBAC, the royal fathers, and our mothers. It is indeed a humbling experience for me to be here today to receive this very, very exceedingly rewarding honor. Rewarding, I would say, not just for me as an individual, but to me is a recognition of a modest contribution to our industry, and that is journalism. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my co-awardee, Dr. John Momo, whom I have had a relationship with of over 40 years, both in and outside the profession. However, the significance of today's occasion and ceremony is not just in the theoretical aspect of passing on degrees and awards or the esotericism of our pontifications here or exhortations to the new graduates. No. The significance of today's occasion lies in the seriousness that we have placed on the value of education in our environment, in our society in our country at large. And that seriousness is not just an eloquent testimony of the 
individual entrepreneurship spirit and the zeal of our people exemplified by the founder of this institution but also to every individual here both graduates awardees parents well wishers those who are interested in the value of education are here today not necessarily for the award it's for the intrinsic value of what this occasion means for our country and I personally, I have an emotional attachment to events like this because I come from a home of educationists. My father of blessed memory was an educationist. He ran a school in this Lagos in the 60s and 70s. Those who are old enough would know Benevolent High School, Suruleri. That was my father's school then. So I have been weaned in the tradition to, of value for education. And that tradition is what we carry on to today. That all our children are well educated, well exposed. And when I see individuals that also share this same value and contributing their resources into enhancing the value of education in our environment, I always doff my heart. I doff my heart for you. I doff my heart for the chancellor, the vice chancellor, the professors, and everybody that has made this institution what it is. Personally, I'm a journalist. I call myself a reporter. Because in journalism, once you are a reporter, whatever attainment you reach in life, you remain a reporter. So I remain a reporter. And in our industry, in the reporting industry, we abhor titles. That's why when Dr. John Momo is on air, and is on air with a toddler, the toddler refers to him as John. Because we do not subscribe to titles in our profession. So in this vein, and following that culture, in the last 30 years of my adult life, I have refused more than 36 chieftaincy titles. And I've refused certain awards and degrees from certain institutions that I did not consider serious enough or of higher quality with substance, intellectual rigor that will make me to accept such awards. <laughs> but Caleb University gave me a pleasant surprise because I never knew that I knew anybody in this institution until I received the letter conferring this award on me. That is one. Two, upon my receipt of the letter, my pre-inclination was just to say, oh, it's one of those awards. Let me just put it aside. Then something struck me. The name Caleb University rang a bell because I've known Caleb uh, primary school, secondary school, and all of that. So, and I saw the common thread, and I decided that someone who has started from the kindergarten, from the elementary to the tertiary, connotes seriousness and focus, tenacity of purpose, assiduity, <laughs> responsibility, responsiveness. And I said, let me conduct my own little research as a reporter. And I conducted my re research. And the research showed me that Caleb University is not just one of those serious institutions. As young as it is, it is within the first 10 category in the ranking of universities in Nigeria today. <laughs> within a space of 15 years. And that's no mean achievement. It speaks volumes to the seriousness of purpose of the drivers of this institution, the visionaries, and those who engage in academic rigor and imparting knowledge to our young graduates here. And I want to say that the degree that has been given to me in my profession also makes me proud of this university. And I pledge with every ounce of energy at my disposal 
that I shall continue and start from today to contribute my quota to the progress of this institution. Again, because of the modesty of our profession in, in journalism, we are not given flamboyance and frivolities. So I will not be able to start binding figures in Naira and Kobo. But I do not set my store nor count my wealth in Naira and Kobo terms. I count my wealth in the number of smiles that I can put onto people's faces. And I'm going to do that, God be my helper, for this institution and for those coming behind us to also be exposed to the quality of education that we've had and to enhance the quality of education that Caleb University is noted for, is acknowledged for, and is honored for. And just in a nutshell, I want to use this occasion to speak to students of my profession in this university, and that is mass communication. Mass communication is not just a profession for all comers. In the past, when those of us who are old enough who are practicing this journalism, we practiced under the military regime when it was the most difficult profession to practice in Nigeria. And that was, those were the days when we came to work with a toothbrush, a face towel, a copy of your passport, because you didn't know where you would sleep that night. You either got arrested and detained by the military for publishing correct statements, or you had to escape through the Nadeko route outside Nigeria on exile. I was on the exile too when we were fighting for democracy. I'm sure you heard from my CV. I was editor of National Concord, owned by MK Abiola, who won the presidential election of 1993, June 12. That was annulled. And we plunged into the struggle. And we held Nigeria down for five solid years without job. And we were in exile with other like minds. Ashiwa Jubola, Metinumbu, General Kenri Ade, Commodore Dan Suleiman, Professor Bola Giakiemi. So many of us, Chief Dan Oyegun, in the UK, in the US, fighting for the enthronement of the democracy that we have today and that people have taken for granted. And that is why I recommend to our students who are studying mass communication, please go back and do some backgrounding. It is an elementary aspect of journalism that you must background your stories for, to broaden your horizon and to enhance your knowledge. If you are going to inform people, you must be adequately and well informed yourself. And that is why, you know, generally there is an adage that says, Jack of all trades, master of none. In journalism, we are jack of all trades, master of all. Because we are supposed to inform in all areas, in medicine, in science, in engineering, in infrastructure, in development, in all areas of human endeavor. Information is cardinal. Information is, tri is central. Information is pivotal to every aspect of development. So we are Jack of all trades, master of all. I want to commend to our graduating students that you must begin to be jack of all trades and master of all. And the sky is your limit. Thank you very much. Thank you, University. Thank you, the Vice Chancellor. You can do better. You can do better. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll take this home. He said, if you must inform others, you must be well informed. That sounds like a Yoruba adage that says, if you must give another person clothes, <laughs> look at the one you are wearing. All right. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate those words of wisdom. Thank you. Um, and let me inform you that the founder of this university has been so magnanimous. Uh, every year, at the moment, we have about 100 students on his scholarship alone. 
I think that's not small, but you give a small clap. All the students in the College of Education in Caleb University, they are on scholarship. And that's one of the ways he gives back to the society. We appreciate that, and we pray that his strength will not abate in Jesus' name. Yes, we also will give Dr. John Momo some moments of remarks with us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much indeed. The visitor, Your Excellencies, Kabiesis, parents, distinguished faculty members, ladies, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in order not to leave out anything, I decided to pen now a few words here. I must first and foremost let you know that I'm very, very thrilled by this recognition. <laughs> thrilled because this is the fifth award, honorary award that I will get from Nigerian universities. So when I got this one that made it the fifth one, I said to myself, this is like the icing on the cake. So I'm indeed very excited. You know, today we celebrate the 2022 graduating set of Caleb students. I don't know how to refer to you. Calabians, Calibites, Calebites, Calebites. You have burned the proverbial midnight oil and have concluded various levels of degree. From first, postgraduate, masters, and PhD. As the good book says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning. And so I extend my hearty salutations on a well-deserved finale. I urge you all to deploy your learning imbibed to challenge the status quo to the betterment of our society. Because you know, to learn and not to do is really not to learn. To know and not to do is really not to know. Stephen Covey. I also acclaim all of you who may be work in progress, graduating later on in the years to come. The real deal is that graduation is closer than you think. You know, I remember when our lecturers told us in the 70s that we were to make the most of the time we had. How we started, how we snared at him, we chuckled. We didn't understand what it meant. Now I know, and sometimes I look back and I say, bring back the old days. So to make the most of the time on your hands while keeping your eyes on the prize, because time flies, you have to do what you have to do quickly. Knowing that the youth of a country shapes its future, I enjoin you to ready yourself for leadership, which essentially means influencing your network as your surgeon through university prepares you for the real world. By 2050, Nigeria will be the fourth largest country in the world, possibly overtaking the United States population, an unmistakable force to reckon with. I enjoin you to be part of that ongoing effort and laying the foundations that will set the giant of Africa on our feet. On a personal note, it's indeed an immense honor for me to be presented with an honorary doctorate degree of business and entrepreneurial start Chris Causa by this world-renowned institution. 
I stand before you deeply humbled and grateful for this recognition, which is a tremendous milestone in my professional career. And I'm profoundly grateful to the Governing Council for bestowing on, upon me honor. As I stand here before you, I feel that I'm not accepting this award on behalf of myself, but on behalf of all those who have stood with me throughout my journey and have helped me to achieve this success. I hope that this degree will be a, a symbol of inspiration and encouragement to those who are working hard to reach their dreams and to those striving to make positive impact in their community. My hope is that by receiving this award, that I can help to facilitate the mission of continuing to work hard in order to make the world a better place for everyone. So visitor, council members, thank you for believing in me, for believing in Delhi and all like-minded people. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your understanding. I just want to give you one more story before I end my short remark. One story. Somebody came, came up to me the other day and said to me that he wanted to go into the transport, transportation business. And he had no money. But he wants to take on the likes of Ekene Dilichuku, ABC Transport, and all the big transportation companies. So I asked him, how exactly are you going to do this? He said, I have a Keke Marua. And he was going to work with the Keke Marua to achieve that feat. I said, go for it. How long do you think it will take him to get to the top of his business? Do you think he will succeed with Keke Marua? There's so many of them on the road. Do you think he will be able to take on those big companies that have large ground buses moving from here to Accra, to Ghana? If your answer is no, then you are wrong. The answer is yes. Because that was the audacity with which I started channels 26 years ago. I, I had an equivalent of what was the Keke Marwa. I had a transmitter the size of a briefcase. Briefcase. My competitors, NTA and all the government stations, had transmitter the size of the whole length of this wall. In fact, bigger than this screen, twice as much. They were transmitting to cover the whole of Lagos State and Nigeria. I could only transmit to cover the radius of this hall. Today, the rest is history. Today, Channels is the most awarded television station in Africa. We have won not only local awards, national awards, as you know, we are 15-time award winners for the National Broadcast Station of the Year. We have won the Africa Station of the Year two times. And we continue to win awards. And not only that, we are providing employment to more than 500 people. And the spiral effect is more. We have bureaus in London, in Washington, in the UAE, in South Africa, and in the West African sub-region. All this from the briefcase transmitter. So you can do it. As you go out, the world is your oyster. Go out and explore. You've been told that it's not all about jackpying. Jack my daddy said. But remain here if you want to. You may go and acquire the experience, make some money and come back, but life's difficult over there. But let's build Nigeria together. Nigeria needs 
men and women like you. Together we can build it. Together this nation will be great. Because if the visitor did not remain in Nigeria to set up Caleb University and the Caleb institutions, there will be no Caleb. So I thank you all. I thank you, sir. And I thank you, everyone. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. John Momo, for that wonderful piece. We appreciate this by no small means. The Chancellor, sir, I have the honor to request the best graduating student of the 2021-2022 academic session to give the valedictory speech on behalf of the graduating class. Shokwe Oluwa is the best graduating student for the College of Environmental Science and Management. The Vice Chancellor, Caleb University, Ikorodu Imota, I stand on existing protocols that have been established. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the 12th Convocation Ceremony of Caleb University. My name is Olodeoku Mushokwe Foluwa Esther, and I am the best graduating student in the Department of Architecture. Also, I am the prayer coordinator. I was the prayer coordinator for the 2021-2022 workforce that was led by my ESCO that was led by my that was led by my GC Pedro Yanoluwa. <laughs> the Bible says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. I want to thank God Almighty because he has helped me and he has brought me to where I am today. I worked for him and he crowned my efforts and gave me beautiful results. He is the one that we are celebrating today. My son named Olodeoku, the Oriki is Bolo de Obaku, Ojuwe Kivo Kokoriko. It means if the owner of the house is not dead, the backyard will be kept tidy. And God has been doing that for me and my family. He has been helping us ever since he died for us on the cross of Calvary. Special recognition goes to the family of late Dr. Kayode and Mrs. Florence Olodeoku. My father would have been the happiest man on earth if he was alive to see me today. But he died, unfortunately, when I was in 300 level. He was a doctor in the civil service of Lagos State Government a consultant gynecologist and obstetric surgeon and he was very passionate about education in my family my mother mrs florence olodeoku i want to thank her very much for her prayers for her love and for her sacrifice and for being my best friend my sister eniola oluwa olodeoku i want to thank her so much and if the multiverse theory exists i hope you are my sister in every one of them I want to appreciate my lovely friends and family, my friends that turned family, my roommates. I really thank you all. And I would like to acknowledge Caleb University for being the catalyst in my journey to becoming an architect. Another phase is over and a new phase has begun. I want to express my unlimited gratitude to the members of teaching and non-teaching staff of the Department of Architecture. 
I want to appreciate my lecturers for their extensive impartation of knowledge in me that went beyond the corners of the classroom. Most times, I message them on WhatsApp and they answer me, helping me and explaining things that were confusing to me. I really appreciate my potters in Mary Hall for being a guide to me while I was in the halls of residence. And I want to thank Dr. Wang Chuku, the university orator, for helping me with this speech. May God bless you, sir. I would also like to acknowledge my secondary school alma mater, International School, University of Lagos, Akoka Ayaba, for giving me the foundation for entering Caleb University. I'm congratulating my course mates and their family for convocating today because architecture has been ranked the toughest course in the entire world, but we made it. We survived the trials, we survived the juries, all the crying, all the sleepless nights, the challenges that we faced, we survived and we scaled through. Our nights in studio drafting drawings to meet deadlines for juries, our structure tutorials that Adigu Peace helped us with, our game and our movie nights that brought us closer together as a class, and the fact that we are stronger together, I really appreciate you all. On this day, I want to remember Odi Niruka Ugochuku, popularly known as Odi, our course mate that can't be with us today because she has gone to be with the Lord. May her soul rest in perfect peace in Jesus' name. Special recognition goes to the Master's Chapel, my family in spirituality. I love you all and God bless you in Jesus' name. I want to thank the current Vice Chancellor that was previously my chaplain for his constant email updates on sunshine that I receive regularly. It's very encouraging and inspiring. Thank you very much, sir. And I just want to give a brief look into my journey and give some form of encouragement to everyone that was here. Joining the chapel workforce as an architecture student was a leap of faith I took in 200 level. There were moments I would be in studio by 7.30 a.m. planning to stay till 10 p.m. but we'll have to come to chapel for meetings or services in between. The greatest part of my life that God helped me with architecture was time management. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 4 that if you wait for perfect conditions, you will never get anything done. As a student, as a person, as an individual, in every area of our life, if you keep on waiting, oh, the time is not now, oh, things are not working out, oh, I have other things to do, you won't do what you are supposed to do, and at the end of the day, you won't fulfill the goals that you've set. The, when you are punctual, there is always time to spare. Procrastinating only makes what you have to do go away temporarily, and when it's time to do it, you find out that there's little to no time left, or sometimes it's even too late. In the long run, you have to deal with it. The time to start projects and assignments is not the time to watch movies, and the time to rest is not the time to read. With the help of the Holy Spirit, I was able to properly plan my time to meet the demands of my course and my duties as a worker and executive in the chapel. God's time was God's time, and architecture time was architecture time. I didn't mix it up. Each time I received an assignment, I started working on it in class and finished it in the hostel because I knew that most of my time had to be dedicated to design studio that was usually six units. Working in studio as an architecture student is very important, and I want to encourage architecture students to imbibe studio culture. Hiding your designs from your lecturers or your fellow course mates doesn't make you a good architect. When you work in the studio, even though we don't have 24 hours, when you maximize the time you have till 10 p.m., you have your lecturers there, you have your course mates to help you and to guide you through your designs. Your mental well-being as an architecture student and as a person is very important. Architecture being one of the hardest courses in the world, and an architect being the head of all building professionals, a lot of things are expected of us, and it puts a lot of pressure on you. We don't get adequate sleep, and we have to deal with studio and almighty design structures. 
Sometimes the criticism we get from juries discourages us and we don't even want to design anymore. But I want to tell you today that as architects, we deal with lives and the criticism from your jury is not to discourage you or to make you feel bad about yourself, but it's to help you to make your design safe so that we don't experience building collapse or structural failure that leads to loss of life and properties. The surviving on two hours of sleep and coffee is not healthy for you as an architecture student. I want to encourage us not to carry that practice to our masters. As an architecture student and as a person in general, you need adequate sleep for your body to function properly. If you don't rest, your body will eventually break down. Take time to unwind and take time to relax. The, bi the, yes, sir. the biggest challenge I faced as an architecture student was in my 300 level sideways when I had to go for IT training and I didn't have a lot of knowledge on CAD. And I want to advise you that if you don't have knowledge on CAD, practice during your free time and attach yourself to a firm so you can have adequate knowledge. And also watch YouTube and Pinterest, they help a lot. I would like to close with the advice I found in my late father's diary when I was in my lowest during my academic year. Seven ways to get moving after failure or setback. Number one, set smart goals. S for specific, M for measurable, A for achievable, R for realistic, and T for time specific. Number two, drop your baggage. That means forget your failure and setback. Forgive yourself for failing. Number three, reverse engineer your goals, breaking down your big goals into smaller goals. Number four, have a vision for the future. Number five, shrink the tax to as small as they can be so you don't get overwhelmed. Number six, reward yourself for a job well done. Celebrate your small wins because it's with the small wins that you get bigger wins. Number seven, be accountable and have an accountability partner. This really helped me in my, in my education and I'm very sure that it will help you too. I want my life to be an inspiration to people that you can serve God and get good grades. And I want architecture students to know that first class is very possible to achieve. If you haven't given your life to Christ, I encourage you to do so because he loves you and is the only one that can give you success in all your endeavors, including in your academics. I am proud to be a product of the Department of Architecture that is the pride of Caleb University. Once again, I congratulate everyone for you very much. If you value scholarship, make it a louder clap. The Chancellor, sir, we want to call on um, Professor Adedeji Daramola to pray for the graduates. Professor Adedeji Daramola, prayer for the graduates. Amen. Can the graduate stand up and remain standing? Shall we pray? Eternal Rock of Ages, we want to thank you because you are the Alpha and Omega. A couple of years ago, these students came in and matriculated. By your grace and your divine intervention and your help, today they are graduating and they are going into the world. We ask, O oh Lord, that your power shall continue to keep the student, your grace shall be sufficient for them, you begin to enable them. In every area of their life, Lord, they shall continue to remember you. We pray for their parents as well that, Lord, the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut off. Every expectation on these children, Lord, shall be accomplished in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace of the Lord shall be sufficient for you. God shall enable you to break through 
and to make success not only locally, nationally, but internationally. Every hand that rises up against you, the Almighty God shall destroy them. No weapon fashion against you shall prosper. You are going to affect and influence your generation positively, and you are going to be wonderful tree blazers. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you, Professor Adideji Daramala. The Chancellor, sir, in accordance with the extant rule or law of Caleb University, all graduates of the university are eligible members of the Alumni Association of the institution. I have the honor of inviting Mr. Christian Ode Fadihon to induct the graduates into the Caleb University Alumni Association. The Chancellor, sir. Please, all graduates, both undergraduates and postgraduates, should stand and remain standing. Our Honorable Chancellor, sir, in accordance with the extant law of Caleb University, I have the pleasure to induct the latest sets of graduates into the Caleb University Alumni Network today as part of this convocation ceremony. We all the graduates say after me, I, please mention your name, solemnly pledge to be fully committed to the ideals and principles involved in the formation of alumni networks of universities all over the world. I commit myself to promoting the progress of Caleb University as my alma mater so that it shall continue to grow from strength to strength until it is known and respected as an enviable citadel of learning throughout the world. So help me God. Thank you. We're trying to round off now. You may please be seated. Let's listen to the following announcements. After this moment, there will be refreshments for the board members, the council members, our dignitaries, the visiting vice chancellors and the representatives at the university council chambers. For the graduating class, most of you will discover, or you must have heard, that um, your transcripts are ready. So as you step out of this place, please feel free to contact the exams and record officer for your transcript. I know those who have graduated in the last two days uh, have collected there. So please feel free to collect. Thank you. The Chancellor, sir, permit me to call on Dr. Ayo Ogunson, a member of the Board of Trustees of Caleb University, to give the vote of thanks. Thank you so much, sir.
the founder of this prestigious university, my father, my mentor, Dr. Adebu. Uh, you might wonder and said, why is this daddy's son? Yes, there are several sons. I hope you are also sons of, of the founder. How many sons are here? How many sons are here? So I'm permitted to call him my father. Thank you very much for putting this university together. The Chancellor of the University, the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the University, the Chairman of the Governing Council, very eminent personalities present here, my colleagues, members of the Board of Trustees of the University, the two very distinguished awardees that we have here today, very great mentors. Uh, now, Dr. Dili Alake, no more Mr. Dili Alake. Yes, Dr. Dili Alake, sir. Thank you very much. It's an honor to uh, give this vote of thanks, but most especially to the graduating student. My advice to you as you move on now is simple. This is not the end. This is just the end of a new beginning. Don't rest. You are just starting. You've gotten your degrees. Fantastic. But a lot lies ahead of you. Let me remind you, and it will surprise you to know that sometimes the best students on campus at a graduating ceremony like this most times most times they end up not succeeding out there in the bigger world for those of us who are out there you will know those top class students those second class upper students who understands that this is just the end of a new beginning they are just starting and they feel they have not done very well some of them will just shake up their self get focused and before you know that a first class product will begin to bow to those ones when they meet out there in the compete in a very very competing world your story won't be like that for the best graduating student be smart take on the bull take on the strength face it squarely and do well for those of us who feel you have not done very well i tell you excellence lies ahead of you please let god be your strength i was a bit emotional there and i missed the recording of the presentation bomb by the best student best graduating student today i have three daughters and they are very much aware that i'm coming for this convocation ceremony i've been recording other proceedings but i missed the proceeding of that young lady because it's very educative it's something i love to play for my daughters that you can strike a balance between your academics and serving God. I practice the same in school to round up during my higher institution days. I was the general coordinator of the campus fellowship. I was the general coordinator. And then right from secondary school, the secondary school, I was a president of the school fellowship. And at the same time, the head boy of the entire school. So I understand what it means to strike a balance between your academics and God. And when you marry the two together, the sky is never your limit. I left secondary school, I posted to the higher institution, I maintained that. I was the, the governor, virtually in all the classes, at all levels, I was the governor of my class and I was the president of the school fellowship. I, it's, it's a journey that I love to see that will emulate and do similar things. And I'm so excited to be here today to see a young lady who could attest to it publicly that I combined academics with God and today the reward is it's, it's, it's limitless. Congratulations and con congratulations for those who have done the same and for as many of us who are seated here who have not seen reasons to allow God in all that we do. I challenge you to please take this uh, opportunity to, to tag and log in one. My prayer for you as you go is God will go ahead of you. God will support and accompany you all through your life's journeys. 
and he will be there to guide, to assist, and to lift you up. As God blesses you, don't forget this university. Remember to add value. Don't forget where you start from. Once again, I welcome all our parents who witnessed today. God bless you all. You will see more good days in Jesus Christ. All the children that you are looking up to go to, to experience what you want, sir, join today. They will help you in Jesus' name. And when it is time for you to see your children celebrated, you will not be found wanting. And finally, I hand over the university into the hand of God, and I ask that the university will grow from strength to strength. Once again, thank you very much for coming, and as we go back, God will go with us. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Ayo Ogunson. Thank you very much. The Chancellor, sir, I now have the pleasure to request you to declare the convocation closed. I now declare the convocation for the 2021-2022 session closed. The Chancellor, sir, thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as you heard, the activities and proceedings marking today's and indeed this convocation's outing come to an end right away. We have spent some time today beyond and over our plan and expectation, but I tell you the time has been very well spent. Let me then very quickly commit to you the piece of the Bible which says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Think about it, meditate on it, let it drive and inspire you, especially our graduates. Having said that, let me invite very humbly our DVC Research, Innovation, Strategy and Administration, Professor Olaleko Asikia, to say the closing prayer. The DVC, sir. Gently, sir. Shall we rise to pray? And so, Lord, we thank you. We bless your name. We give you glory, honor, and all adoration. Thank you for Caleb University. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the graduates. Thank you for their parents. Thank you for the management and staff of Caleb University. Thank you for today is the day that you've made. We are happy for what you've done today. We we'll pray as the graduates go, let your presence go with them. We we'll pray for them. Let march from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. We we'll pray that you will be a lamp unto their feet and you will be a light unto their paths in the name of Jesus. We we'll pray, Lord, you will expand their capacity. All the variation and the dynamics of the work life Lord, you will help them to succeed. We shall have great things to say about them. And we pray for the parents that this is going to be the least you will see of the manifestation of God in the lives of your children in the name of Jesus. And we pray for you that you will not die, but you will live to glorify the name of the Lord in the land of the living. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank God for the awardees of today that, Lord, we only recognize the much that they have done for the society. Lord, we pray they will go on doing greater things in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the visit of the university. We pray, Lord, that you will continue with him in Jesus' name. You will continue to use him for humanity in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for every principal officers and all officers of the university that you will move us forward. And your name will be glorified. We bless your name, Lord. We return all glory to you. For in Jesus' precious name, we pray. Thank you very much. As we remain standing, 
there will be a rendition of the Caleb University anthem first, and then the national anthem. The Caleb University anthem, please. session in reverse order as usual and I think of you please stay as you are don't move around no shuffling
until the academic procession and the dignitaries have made their exit. Please, let me once again remind our graduates, turn in your robes to the designated places and collect your gift packs. God bless you. is a faith-based institution, the first private university to offer undergraduate degrees in Lagos State. It has 
one of the best environments any university in any part of the world can boast of. And the motto of Caleb University is for God and humanity. And that's the reason why as a faith-based university, Caleb University takes seriously the mandate to build character. Uh, in Caleb University, we are interested in the holistic development of our students. And on the academic front, we are building competencies, ensuring the right infusion of professional elements to ensure that our students are able to mainstream seamlessly.